Eric Darling here. I hope no one heard that weird hand fart. <laughs> With Darling Data, um, recently voted by Bear Gut Magazine to uh, have the, the YouTube channel with the most uh, accidental hand farts, which was uh, really, I think, I think the good folks at Bear Gut Magazine are psychic. How else could they know? Anyway, today's video, we're going to talk about advanced string splitting in SQL Server, or really just one aspect of it. I can't possibly cover very advanced as aspects of string splitting in SQL Server because um, that, that would be a long video. And I've, I've gotten complaints about videos that, that crested the 20 minute mark. And boy, oh boy, uh, the attention span on you kids. Um, if, it, if, you, if you feel like you need to stim a bit <laughs> and step away from the computer, uh, YouTube was kind enough to provide you with a pause button somewhere over there. Oh, my, my finger's gone. Somewhere over in that corner. So you can always hit pause and come back after you've hand flapped and gargled and done your fidget spinner or whatever. But anyway, we're going to talk about you and me and how you, you can buy me a fidget spinner. Uh, for the, the low cost of $4 a month, you can sign up for a channel membership, which will get you all of these videos. If you, if you don't have the 4 bucks a month, if you feel that I am unworthy of fidget spinning, uh, you, can, you can like and comment and even subscribe to the channel, channel and join 4,700 other data darlings who get notified every time one of these gorgeous videos drops. Uh, if you need SQL Server Consulting, I, have a, I am, of course, available, not 24-7, but um, sometimes seven days a week, usually during the day, uh, but not before, like, 8 a.m., and definitely not after, like, 6 p.m., because that's when I do other stuff. I have a family and all that who uh, also require my time, though... The pay on that is significantly lower. Anyway, uh, if you would like uh, to, to watch me do this whenever you, whenever you feel like it, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, you can get all of my performance tuning content for life for about 150 US dollars uh, with the discount code spring cleaning. What's nice about that is that um, you don't have to worry about anything after you get it. You know, you're, there are no time commitments. You can, you can go off and stim and spin and whatever, flap your arms, whatever wackadoodle stuff you need to do, and then come back and watch more of it. If you think 20 minutes is a long time, 24 hours is even longer. Uh, if you would like to catch me live and in person, uh, I guess this would be a total of 16 hours and not in 20-minute chunks. <laughs> Uh, you can catch me and Kendra Little November 4th and 5th at Past Data Summit in Seattle doing SQL Server stuff, performance tuning, getting wild all day long, between the hours of 8 p.m. and 6 p.m., most likely. Uh, if there is an event nearby you and you think, boy, this handsome vis visage that stands before me sure would be a great accidental hand fart, uh, <laughs> Uh, addition to that lineup, let me know what that is. Who knows? Maybe I'll show up. And with that out of the way, let's talk about this string splitting nonsense. Now, before we get into the advanced stuff, I need to, I need to show you the, uh, the proper way to get the, the uh, a, uh, let's just say, a string between two delimiters. In this case, we're going to have the same delimiter twice, but in real life, and ex actually in the example that we're going to look at below, we will have a variety of delimiters and in slightly different circumstances. So first, I need to show you the proper way to do this. If you just have two delimiters and you're like, give me whatever's between them. Now, it doesn't have to be colons. It could be any two delimiters, right? It might be a period in the next period. It might be a period and a comma or a space and then something, whatever it is. There's all sorts of uses for this sort of stuff. So we need the substring function, and we need to talk about the three arguments of the substring function. All right. The first argument, because this is something this is something a lot of people mess up. The first argument of the substring function is the string that you want to sub for. Ah. Minus one family friendly point. The second argument 
of the, um, the, the string split is the position that you want to start your substring at. In this case, it is the position of the first semicolon in the string, right, that one up there, uh, plus the length of that character. Um, this, is, this is something that's pretty important, like the length, you need to add that onto the position of that so that you don't include that. If you want to include it, you can. But in this case, you want this, we don't want that, that colon to show up. We want the space between the colons. I'm losing more family-friendly points as the further this goes on. The third argument is not the end position. A lot of people think, because in some, in some places, substring does function differently. But uh, the third argument in SQL Server is not the position of the end. It is the number of bytes after the first thing that you want to include in the string. So that's where things get more complicated. Because for the first one, we just need to get the car index of the, of the colon in the text plus the length of that. And the second one, we need to use advanced car indexing to get the position of the first occurrence in the string after, right, there's a third argument in car, for car index. And we're going to start it at the position of the first colon in the string, of course, plus the length of the colon. Damn, <laughs> this is not going well. Then we have to do some other stuff. We have to subtract the length of the delimiter and the length of the, the, inde the car index of the first occurrence. And that will give us the, the, the string between the two things. Now, I'm using the sys.messages table, and I'm only looking for, uh, for rows that have two colons occur in them. So it's medically improbable, but there it is. And uh, this is just to make it a little bit easier, because if we didn't have this, we would need all sorts of like, you know, case expressions or other, protecting, other protections for the substring function to make sure that we don't throw an error if we, throw an inval if we, if we give an invalid length to the substring function. So that's why that's there. But if we run this query, we're going to get back uh, the actual text of the message, and we'll be able to verify in a few different places that this is correct. Right? So uh, let's just take this one as an easy example. It's from uh, colon space percent %d to uh, colon, and that's what we get right there in the parse string. Uh, there's another good example a little bit further down that's really easy. To, uh, to show in there. Um, I forget exactly where it is, but we'll just look at this one. Oh, uh, there's two colons in that one. That one's a little weird. Um, I don't know. Uh, you get the point. It worked, right? Uh, there, actually, this is the, oh, actually, no, that one's not so good. Uh, these ones are good. These ones are easy. Uh, so here we have is page uh, percent %d, and that's exactly what we get back in there. Um, some people would throw like a, a L trim, R trim, or a trim on this to get rid of spaces around that. I'm not that fancy, so uh, we're just going to leave that in there. But anyway, the whole point is this all works, right? This all works just fine. The situation I had to deal with was I needed to find the space between a variety of delimiters, and I needed to find the first occurrence of each one. So what I'm going to do is show you a little bit about what the strings looked like for me. Um, this is not, of course, exact. This is just sort of um, what, this is enough to make a simple MVP. It's minimal, minimal viable product, or M MVC, MCVE, complete example, minimal viable complete example, or whatever they call it, where the strings were kind of weird. Some of them started with a number, and then you know, some of them started with a, uh, uh, a character of some sort, a special character, not like a letter, but they were all sort of set up like this, where I needed to find the space between the first weird thing and the next weird thing. And I knew what all the weird things were. Uh, they were asterisks, in this case, exclamation points, uh, question marks, and dollar signs, right? So these are all the weird things that I had to find, and I had to find the first occurrence of whatever came first in the string, and then the second occurrence of whatever came next in the string. And that required some serious brain time from me. Uh, now, just because I don't remember what I actually did from this, I'm going to rerun all this, and I'm going to create these two tables and populate them. And then I'm going to show you that this table has 
one, in, one, one row for each instance of the special characters I had to find. I didn't specifically need this, it just made writing the query a little bit easier. So uh, the substring is gonna, is gonna do exactly what, um, exactly what we did up there. It just looks a lot cleaner because I, all I have to do is, all I have to do is put the columns in here and operate on the columns rather than have to like operate on, generate all the expressions in the select and operate on all the expressions because that turns into a, as you saw before, that turns into a real confusing time with all the, you know, function, sub-function stuff in there. T-SQL doesn't make it easy to nest these things. But um, what I did was uh, I used cross-apply twice. The first cross-apply um, will go and find the top one, uh, and it, it'll up get the top one from this query. And what this query does is find the search position, so it finds the car index of the search string and the string that we care about. And then uh, it looks for where search position is greater than zero because this ha actually helped me avoid a lot of errors. Um, and, and, you know, it was, it was better this way. And then we order by the, 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 the earliest search, so search position ascending, so the earliest search, search position. Then in the second cross apply, we're actually going to reuse elements that project out of the first cross apply. So note this one is called x1, right? And if we come down here and we zoom in on this, uh, in this one, we're going to do, this is like the second argument of substring, where we're going to search from uh, the search position of, the, of the, the search element that we care about and the string that we care about at the starting position of the x1 search position, right? So, and then down here, rather than filter on greater than zero, we're going to say where the, the, fil the position in this one is greater than the search position that we found for the first one, right? And then uh, we're going to order that by this. And now if we run all this, what we'll get back is exactly what we should see, right? So just to highlight this string a little bit, um, the first weird character was a dollar sign. The second weird character was an asterisk. So, and then the substring between those two was the number 23. And that holds up for these as well, where the first weird character was an asterisk, sorry, the fir first one, the first weird character is a dollar sign. The second one, the first weird character is an asterisk. That's in the first position. The second one was an exclamation point. And the fourth position and the substring between asterisk and exclamation point was the number 12. So this works for all of these pretty well. Um, if granted, it might not be like the most explosively well-performing uh, code in the world. If you have very, very large data sets, of course, indexing for this stuff does help a bit. But once you get into the realm of like searching through strings and stuff, a lot, a lot of performance stuff can happen that isn't easily controlled by uh, you or indexes or really anything else. It, uh, it's, all, it's all very fuzzy string stuff. Um, as I've said before, strings were a mistake. Should not be in databases. Everyone should have just learned binary and learned what, how to read binary representations of strings. Um, I'm kidding, you shouldn't actually ever have to do that. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. Uh, I hope that you find uh, sort of weird query stuff like this is as fun as I do to, to, to solve and, and write and, and figure out how to get it to work. Um, I, am, I am not the sharpest knife in the drawer, so actually writing this code took me quite a, quite a bit of like, you know, uh, head, head on keyboard moments. Uh, but, but once it got there, boy, was I proud of me. I was like, I'm a big boy now. I, I pull up, my, I don't need a diaper anymore yet. I mean, I might need one again. Who knows, who knows where the weekend will take me, but, uh, you know, weird stuff happens between, in, in the delimited between Friday and Monday, weird stuff happens in there. Hopefully not with my colon though. Anyway, uh, that's probably enough there. Uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye. Uh, please don't report this video.